Adobe Camera Raw has recently added a lot of great new AI-based tools, and if you use them, you very likely run into this somewhat confusing or frustrating update prompt, but it's easy to avoid if you know these tools really work. Let's start with this Puffin image, which I already processed a bit in Lightroom, but I've opened it up in Photoshop as a raw smart object because if I double click into Adobe Camera Raw, the tools that are currently available in Camera Raw are more advanced than what you have access to today in Lightroom. To get access to everything we're gonna use here, you wanna to go to the settings top right, go to the technology previews for ACR, and make sure new AI features and settings panel is turned on. If it's not, check it and restart Photoshop. That way you'll have access to everything you see in the video here, which we're gonna to have to do with these features on in Adobe Camera Raw to do all the things we're gonna to do today. So the first thing I wanna work on here is the noise in this image. If I zoom into the details, you can see there's quite a bit of noise here in the sky and in the bird, because I shot at ISO 1400. So I'm gonna go down and enable the new AI denoise. Now, if I was working in Lightroom with the older version of this, I could still work on the raw this way, but it would generate a new file and I'd have to commit to a slider value at the time I generated it. With the Adobe Camera Raw version, we can now do this after the fact on a smart object and change the amount anytime. So here it's made an improvement, but I wanna push a little further. So let's go up to maybe like 55%. You can see that's cleaned things up much nicer from before to after. It's done a really nice job of improving that image and it's done so on my same file with full flexibility after the fact, so that's great. However, if you're paying close attention, you notice this little update AI settings prompt here at the top left. And what's happened here is that I used another AI-based tool before I started this video, and it's now out of date because it affects things when I change the denoise AI here. And if I go click and open up this little disclosure triangle, I can see the problem is I used the AI-based version of the remove tool. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna zoom back just a little bit here. And what happened is, see this pattern of noise? I fixed something here when the image was noisy. And now that we denoised everything, it's out of date. This clone job needs to be updated to match its surroundings. That's the problem. And if I go click the backslash to look at the original, it was this blade of grass that I found distracting. And if we go to the remove tool, you know, I could use the clone or the healing brush and that would just live update because they're not AI based tools. But they don't do a nice job around things like the blades of grass here. So the AI based tool is the right tool, but when I have it, it does need to be updated here. So that's what's going on is this needs to be updated now to match its surroundings. So I can go click on update AI settings. It'll update everything and notice how it takes some time to run, but then it's now matching the pattern of noise and it did regenerate the grass a little bit. If I look from before to after, see it's a different fix. So the reason that we get this little prompt to update the AI settings, well, there's a few reasons. One, obviously it took some time. So every time I go and you know move this denoise slider, I don't wanna wait 10 seconds for the image to update. That would be super annoying. It would probably crush the battery life on my laptop. My fans would start running. If I didn't have access to the internet, some of the AI based tools couldn't even update. But for something like this, you also have the problem that maybe the content changed. When I go to run this tool now to match what's going on over here, I'm gonna get a new fix, a new blade of grass. And I don't think I like that as much. So if I wanna fix that, I have the option to do that. I can go back to my remove tool, go click on the same remove point and just cycle through my variations. And that looks a little bit better. So I can accept that. So part of the reason you get that little prompt is so you know to check your work and make sure it looks good. And if you need to, make a little fix. So, you know, this AI denoise is non-destructive, but it doesn't mean that you aren't gonna potentially create a little bit of work when you use it because these AI tools stack up in a certain order of operations. Let's cancel out of this and we'll consider another image to really understand what's going on. So with this other image, let's work all the way through all the AI tools, but in the order that ACR works so that you never have to update the image and we'll learn how it really thinks to figure out how to better use these tools. So the first thing I wanna do here is start with denoise. Let's zoom in so we can see the detail. This was shot you know, in bright light at low ISO. It's a pretty clean image. I don't see a lot of noise. Nevertheless, I'm gonna run denoise. If you're gonna run this, it's the first thing you wanna do because it affects everything that happens to the image afterwards. So we'll let it run. I don't see a whole lot of change here. Let's just dial it back to like maybe 20% or so. I think that'll be nice to just clean up the image. It could help me make a little bit better print. So we've cleaned up the knee noise. And now the next thing I'm thinking about is 
This lighthouse to me is a little bit in the center of the image. I wouldn't mind if it's further left, kind of open up the right hand side of the frame. So let's change the cropping. I'm going to click on the crop tool and you can see the original image was actually bigger. So if we just unlock this and drag it the right, I could just keep the original image content and that's probably better. But if I really want to get this lighthouse all the way to the rule of thirds, I need to go a bit further. So I can enable expansion and bring this out. So now it's really on that rule of thirds. But in doing so, I've got this gap. There's no original pixels here. They need to be invented by AI. So I can go and use generative expand and it'll fill in these pixels for me. Now this tool tends to run at a little lower resolution. So this is good for social media, but not necessarily print yet at this point. And we can cycle through and figure out what's the best version of it. And I think maybe that, I don't know, let's go with the first one I think is probably the best here. So we'll keep that. And now that we've expanded it, the next thing I'm thinking about is this little rock here. Let's go and remove that. And when I click on the remove tool, notice I see I've got some existing remove points here. These are healing brush tools, which does not use AI. So you can see before there's like a person that I removed with a healing brush and that's fine. And I don't have to do any AI based updates because this is not an AI based tool. But this rock, I can't really use the healing brush on things that have all the texture of this water. I want to use the AI based tool and this will potentially affect the order I work. So just keep in mind, not every remove tool is an AI tool, just the ones that use generative AI. So let's zoom in and we can fix this rock. It's the second rock that I find a little bit distracting. Now, if you don't use detect objects, watch what happens. I'm going to go and select this area. And what's going to happen is it's probably going to create another rock. It's just going to remove this rock and put a new rock in place, which is not what I want. But I just want to demonstrate the issue because yeah, this is a little weird. There's another rock. There's another rock. I find that with detect objects off, it just likes to create another rock. So let's go delete this point and instead turn on detect objects first before I brush and now brush over this area with this detect objects on. I'm going to hit the reflection there and now remove. I find that when I've got the detect objects on, it's going to do a nice job of cleaning this out. That's a little weird, but let's cycle through the options. That's a little better. That's a little strange. So let's go delete this. Let's try one more time. I generally find that with the detect objects on, it tends to do a better job of getting rid of the thing that I want and not inserting some other rock in its place. There we go. I think that looks better. There we go. So I think that looks clean. Let's now zoom back. And the next thing I'm thinking about is maybe kind of blurring out this horizon line a little bit here. And a tool we can use for that is going to be the lens blur. So when I click apply, it's going to analyze the image and generate a depth map, trying to figure out what's near and what's far. And you can see it from before to after. I see how it's kind of cleaning up that horizon line there. It's a little bit, you know, sharp here and a little softer here. I don't know that I need to go quite as far as that. Maybe I can dial back the amount a little bit to like 30% or so, but there is potentially an issue with this tool. It is an AI based mask. And if we click on visualize depth, you can see that's the way it detected depth in the image. And the heat map, the color here is kind of showing the change from near to far to super distant. And so these are the things that will get blurred and these are the things that will not. What I don't want is a rapid change in color because these rocks are, especially here, these are right by the water. There's no reason why it should abruptly go from sharp to blurry. And if I go and zoom in here, it probably doesn't look all that great. And indeed, look at this tree. That looks pretty terrible. It's sharp. And it's got this weird blurry edge because the depth map is just not that accurate. It should be a much softer transition. So we need to fix that. Or if we look at this lighthouse, you know, this is also kind of weird, right? It looks almost like a, a model or something. It's got the same problem where there's too much of a transition. So we need to fix that depth map. And it's an easy thing to do. I'm going to turn on visualize depth. What I can do is I can paint more foreground or more distant stuff, otherwise known as in this refinement area here, it's going to be focus for the near stuff and blur for the distance. So I want more of this foreground area to be focused. I don't want to blur it. So I'm going to click on focus and I take my brush and just brush right over these areas. I'm not worried about being super precise. It's not something that is necessarily all that critical. And let's just go and see how we've done here. If I go hit Z for my zoom tool, 
You can see that's looking a lot better. It looks a lot cleaner around these areas. The lighthouse looks much cleaner. And yet at the same time, I still get the benefit of kind of softening up that horizon line from before to after. So just another nice little AI based tool that I think can be handy for a lot of images. Not sure I need it in this image, but I think it's a good demonstration of how the tool works. Next up, let's go to the top here. We're using just a static profile, this Adobe neutral. Now we have this Adobe adaptive beta. When I click on this, it'll analyze the image and try and provide a better starting point. And it can make some pretty extreme changes. So a lot of times I like to dial back the amount. I've shown this in a previous video and I'll link that below, but something like maybe like, you know, 15, 20%, I think will be a better starting point for this image. And let's bring up our shadows a little bit. I thought it was a little dark, maybe around like 30%, kind of fill that in. Just feels like the image is a little bit overall better balanced now. And then lastly, I'd like a little more separation from this sky against the clouds here. And so for that, let's go create a local mask. And you can see I already have a few masks. So things like the radial gradient or the luminous range, these are not AI based masks and they won't ever need this, you know, update prompt we saw before, but many of the other masks are, and a sky mask is if we click on create new mask, this whole top section here, select subject, sky, background, objects, people, these are all AI based masks all the way down to this line. So when I select sky, it's an AI based mask that has all this pixel detail. And you can imagine that if I clone out some trees or I change the pattern of noise, denoise, any of that might affect this mask and it might have to be redone later. So these AI masks are dependent on these previous AI tools. So with our sky mask here, let's go. And what I want to do is a little bit of dehaze, maybe like, oh, not even that much, like something around like 10%. And just yeah, that kind of creates a little more separation in my sky to help bring out that cloud detail. So now at this point, we've now run a ton of AI tools. I think all of them on this image. So what happens now? Well, no, first of all, we never had to update the image because we worked in the order that Adobe Camera Raw works. So if you follow the same order that I just used, you don't have to do any updates. But if you go back to one of the earlier steps and revisit it, then you might. If I go and change the denoise amount here, if I go just move it a little bit, suddenly I get prompted to update my image. And if I click the disclosure triangle, you can see all the things we've done to it here. These are all the potential categories of AI based updates. And it's important to know that this is in order that they get applied. So from top down is the way that Adobe Camera Raw works. So the very first thing that happens is denoise. So if I change denoise, then every other thing I did has to get updated. And so now at this point, I can either click to update all, or I can step through them one at a time if I want to kind of consider the results. So let's go click to update the expand only. So obviously this needs to run out to the cloud, make its update, and you can see why you don't want to do this all the time. And I watch and make sure that the right hand side looks appropriate. If it doesn't, I can go back in the cropping tool and I can fix that, but it's okay. So let's update or remove. We'll keep an eye on this rock and make sure it doesn't do anything kind of haywire. That's fine, not great. And we can keep going down the list one by one or just hit update all and let the whole thing run in one big shot here. So now we're caught up. A few things we can take away from this process. First is, you know, anytime we're in a state where we get this little warning, you definitely need to consider that you don't have to click the button right now. It's up to you when you do it. It's not that important that you do it while you're editing, but at least before you're done and you go click OK, you want to update things. Because you think back to the bird image with the grass and the noise there, you're going to have things that don't match. The depth mask might be wrong. The noise might be not applied to the stuff you did with generative fill. So you want to make sure that this is not showing on the screen when you're done. And then you can you know, click to update and review things like the crop expansion, like the rock filling, things where the content's going to change. That's where you're most likely to potentially need to intervene. And that's fine. That's fine. So I'm not worried, but you want to just be aware of those changes. The other thing beyond that is every time I change this denoise, I'm causing myself so many headaches. So do denoise first. If you can commit to your denoise, you will save yourself a lot of headache because the very next two steps here are the ones that are most likely to be a problem. When I change the expand content or the remove content, it's regenerating new pixels. And you need to watch out for artifacts and you could get a totally different result. 
So if at all possible, don't force these to refresh. That's going to cause a lot more pain for you. Yes, denoise is non-destructive and it's great that you can go back and revisit it when you need to. But if you're going to use these AI fill tools, it's much better if you can commit to your denoise and just not touch it later because it is going to potentially cause you a little bit of hassle. The other thing here is, you know, when you come down to these other steps here, so let's go ahead and just, you know, update everything again and consider if I make a, another change further down the list. So I keep working with the denoise, but what if I change some other tool here? Let's go and um, let's play with lens blur. If we change that, yeah, it's prompting us again here. I turn it off. If I look at my list, it's not showing lens blur because I've removed it, but it affected the downstream things. So I don't have to redo these earlier steps, but I do have to redo the later ones. Adaptive profile, that's quite safe. Masking, it tends to do a really good job. I'm not too worried about the detail there. And there's not a lot you can do about it anyway. So I think, you know, of all the things to know here, it's denoise first, especially if you're working with the expand and remove. And then the second point is before you click OK, before you're done, if you see this prompt, you really do want to click on it and make sure you don't introduce any artifacts. Check your work to make sure you're OK. So that's a quick overview of the AI tools in Adobe Camera Raw. Now click to this next video to learn more about these great new AI tools.